Hello and welcome to Chord Melody Part 4. In this video we'll be looking at some of the ways that we can apply the information that we've covered in the series up to this point. And don't forget if you're new to this series to check out the other videos in the description below. Our objective is to turn exercises into skills and in turn skills into music. Through repetition exercises become skills. So our first step will be to repeat small sets of information over and over. Let's begin by setting some constraints. Our project will be to create a simple two bar melody in the key of C. And what we want to do is match each melody note with a chord. The melody note will be the top note of the chord, the highest pitch note in the chord, and our rule or guideline that we'll use for today's session is if the melody note is a chord tone, and remember we're thinking about the chord as being a C6 chord, so if the melody note that we've chosen is either a C, E, G or A note, we'll play a C6 chord under that melody note. If the melody note is not a chord note, treat the melody note as the highest note of a diminished chord. And just a quick reminder, the diminished chord will be a B diminished chord functioning as a G7 flat 9. Before we go any further, I'd just like to remind you that this is simply applying the information we've studied so far. You would not use this exclusively to create a chord solo. When you're creating a chord solo, you need to have variety in your playing. For example, single notes, octaves, chord clusters, tenths, thirds, dynamics, all sorts of things. At a more advanced stage, if we were creating a chord solo, we'd want to have at least three different colours to create enough interest in our playing. At this point, we're simply trying to create a few guidelines so that you can apply this information to your music. And there's a great quote by Picasso, and I think it really sums up the point we're at at this stage. And the quote goes like this. Learn the rules like a pro, so you can break them like an artist. And with that in mind, let's move on to some examples. With each one of these examples, I'll call out the names of the notes, and you'll also see on the screen where the notes are played on the fingerboard. If you're reading the music notation, just keep in mind that I'm playing this in rubato style, so I'm not playing it strictly in tempo. I'm also playing the notes an octave higher than written. In example number one, the notes are C, D, A. The chord in the background is a C, and remember I'm thinking of this chord as a C sixth. The first note in the melody, which is a C note, is a chord tone. It's part of the C6 chord. So I'll play a C6 chord underneath that note. The next note, however, is a D, and that is considered not to be a chord tone. So I'll play a diminished chord with the top note being D. The next note is an A. So again, it's part of a C6 chord, so I'll play a C6 chord under that note. Let's have a listen to example number one. And now for example number two. The melody notes are E, C, D, B, a. E is a chord tone, C is a chord tone. They'll have the C sixth chord underneath it. B and D are both non chord tones, so they'll have diminished chords under them. And the A note is a chord tone, so we'll put a C sixth chord under the A. Let's have a listen to example number two. <laughs> And now to example number three. The melody notes are E, C, D, B, C, D, C. 
And you'll see on this exercise I've marked in the chord tones and the non-chord tones. And you'll see the appropriate chord shapes that are played under each note. Let's have a listen to example number three. And now for example number four. The notes are C, D, E, C, B, D, C. And once again we've marked in the chord tones and the non-chord tones. And now let's have a listen to one more example of this type of chord playing. Here's example number five. The notes are C, B, A, D, C. OK, I'm pretty sure you've got the idea by now, but let's review things just to make sure everything's clear. Currently our project has been to create a melody using the notes from the C major scale and harmonising this melody with chords from the C6 diminished scale. If the note is either a C, E, G or A in the melody that you've written, we harmonise these notes with an inversion of the C6 chord. If the note that you've written is a note that's not in the C6 chord, we harmonise these notes with a diminished chord. And the diminished chord we're using is the B diminished that's functioning as a G7 flat 9 chord. As always, we learn best by doing. So I would encourage you to write your own melodies using the C major scale and harmonising your melodies with chords from the C6 diminished scale. Now at this stage, everything we've been doing is really like an exercise, and the result of course is quite predictable. That's because we're only using one concept, and of course at this stage, that's the concept we're trying to control and understand. What I'm going to do now is give you three more examples based on example number five. The melody in the first bar will be exactly the same as the melody in example 5. However, I'm going to end the phrase differently. The note in the second bar, and I'm going to include a third bar just to let it ring over, will still be the note C. So the melody once again will be the notes C, B, A, D, C. And now this area of guitar playing would be what I call improvising. When I'm sitting down trying to work out a way of finishing a phrase and I'm searching for ideas, I would actually call this improvising. And of course, music is about storytelling. So what I'm going to try and do here is add the element of surprise. I'm going to play chords in the second bar that are different types of chords than the ones we've been playing. And we'll be explaining the concept of where these chords come from in future sessions. But just at the moment, I want to get the idea across of a surprise. So we've got bar one being very predictable, and then in the second bar, some surprise chords. And I guess a definition for a surprise could be something unexpected at an unexpected time. Let's have a listen to example number six. And now for example number seven, the same melody with some surprise chords at the end. Here's another example. Same melody, but a different ending. Here's example number eight. (music) 
just to round this session off, I'm going to include a couple more examples where I'm playing in the first bar a descending C scale, C, B, A, G. And in that bar, I'm going to use the concepts that we've been working on so far. That is, if it's a chord note out of a C6 chord, I'm going to use our C6 chord as a harmonization for that melody note. If it's a note that's not contained in the C6 chord, I'm going to use our diminished chord. And then to finish off the phrase, depending what note I have in the melody, I'm simply going to use a chord that contains that note. I'm going to play the note as the top note of the chord, but I'm not using our C6 B diminished concept in the second or third bar. So in example number nine, the melody is C, B, A, G. In the second bar, I'm going to have the note F played twice and then finishing on an E note. Here's example number nine. Example number 10, I'm using the same descending C major scale, C, B, A, G in the first bar, and in the second and third bars, I'm playing the note E three times, with different chords that all contain the note E, and playing the E as the top note in each chord. Here's example number 10. <laughs> And now I'm going to use the same melody as I did in example number 10, but simply use different chords for a surprise. And here's one more example. The melody is C, B, A, G, and we're harmonizing that in the standard way. In the second bar, I have two D notes, and in the third bar, I have the note E as the melody notes. And once more, in the surprise bars, I'm simply using chords that contain the melody note, and I'm playing the melody note as the highest note in the chord. Okay, that wraps it up for this session. Don't forget if you've got any questions or comments to put them in the comments section below the video. And I look forward to catching up with you again next time. Bye for now.